Hey, this is Chris, and in this tutorial, we're going to go over how to use Formic, Yup, and Material UI to rapidly spin up some forms with some validation, take uh, all the UI concerns out of it, and uh, and get everything set up right out of the box. So I've got a, uh, I just made a new Create React app here. That's the only step that uh, you may not have done yet. So go ahead and, and do that, and then we're going to add a couple of packages so we'll do uh, yarn at yarn add at material dash ui slash core yup and formic and so material ui is just a ui library um uh, yup is what we're going to be using for validation so we'll check our fields and display errors if any pop up and then Formic is the form library that's going to take care of uh, keeping track of the state of our different inputs um, and make everything nice and easy for us to uh, build out our forms. So I'm going to go ahead and yarn start this. And bring it over. So there's our app. And I'll bring this down a little bit. And so we'll just do this in our app.js. So we can get rid of this middle chunk here. And we don't need our logo anymore at the top. And so we're going to need a couple of things. We're going to go with the hooks version of Formic. So we'll import use Formic. We're going to import star as yup and then we'll go ahead and import a couple things from material ui so we'll do a text field and then we'll do the same thing but we'll do a button so we can submit it and now we can start building out our form so let's just get the let's handle the ui stuff first so inside of our div we're going to have just a plain old form tag, and then we'll have a couple of text fields. So we'll do text field, and let me close that off. And so in here, we'll do ID equals first name, name is first name, label is first name. And then we'll come back to a couple of other fields um, that are going to be helped out by Formic. But we can go ahead and copy this. And we can do last name. We can do one more. We'll do uh, email. And then finally, we'll have a button. We'll say submit. We'll uh, give it a variant of, let's do outlined. And let's take a look at what we've got so far. All right, so there's our form. We can do a little bit of styling as well. So let's do, why don't we do inside of app, uh, actually, inside of that form. We'll do display flex, flex direction column. Um, and then we can do, uh, let's do a width of maybe 20 rem and then a margin zero auto. Cool. So now it's centered up for us. Um, we can do actually. Let's do. Let's add some margin to the top just to get a little bit lower on the page, and then a couple of other things. Just kind of some stylistic stuff. Let's do a margin of uh, normal. Cool. 
So now there's a little bit more room. And so if we type in these, they work, uh, but nothing meaningful is happening yet. So let's go ahead and uh, add some meaningful stuff. So now that we've got our UI set up, we can start messing around a little bit with Formic. So inside of our app, we'll say const Formic equals use Formic. And this will take in an object. So with Formic, we set it up similarly to um, setting up form fields with the use state hooks where you have a variable and an updater function. This handles all of that uh, out of the box. So if we set our initial values and we can uh, identify each of our uh, each of our fields by their by their name. So we can say first name is an empty string, last name is an empty string, and email is an empty string. So we're just setting these initial values up to be empty strings. We can have an on submit in this as well which will take in our values. And we can just console log those values. We can json.stringify our values. So now we have this formic object, but we're not referencing it. So you might be able to tell that this is a um, a, a little bit faded. So now we can grab these formic values by referencing this variable and attaching it to some different sections of our form. So first, if we want the on submit, all we need to do is on submit and set it equal to formic, which is the variable here, dot on submit. And so now our submit function is wired up for our form. The issue is these text fields don't know what these values are. So we might be able to submit, but we'd probably get an error. Let's take a look. If we open up the console, if I submit, so nothing's happening there. One last thing to uh, check real quick before we move forward, just making sure this is type submit. And again, this, I'm not expecting this to work, but so we submit. Okay, so nothing meaningful there. Um, so let's go ahead now and wire up these values so we can actually pass in some values to stringify. So inside of our first text field, we're going to set our value equal to formic dot values dot first name. So now this is referencing our initial value, this first name object or first name um, key, which is set to an empty string. We'll do the same thing for last name and for email. The next thing that we want to do is make sure that we are tracking the changes by adding an on change handler. So out of the box, this formic library comes with an on change handler that will uh, wire up the changes in the value uh, to our values object. So I'll show you what that looks like. If we have on change, we can set this equal to formic dot on change. So you're not seeing on change here. This on change method comes off of just using being able to use formic. So this use formic hook out of the box has an on change similar to uh, this on submit, which we have already wired up. So on change, we can just copy that and 
my mistake, this should be handle change. And this should be handle submit, which is probably why we're getting the, the error or the um, just refreshing the page earlier. So formic handle change, we'll add that to our other fields. And so now if we type some stuff in, we should actually see something happening. So we refresh, we submit, first name is blank, last name is blank, email is blank, If we start typing some stuff in. Cool, so now we're starting to see our values coming through. Something that uh, I really like about Formic is how well it plays with Yup. So Yup is our validation library. So in this case, I have my first name, but let's say that last name and email address are required. I don't want to allow the user to submit this form if the required fields are missing. So what I can do is wire up a validation schema using yup, and then I can show any errors if any of those uh, fields have any errors so that the user can then fill them out, correct them, and, um, and then move on to submitting the data as intended. So if we go back here, Above our app, we're going to define our validation schema. So we'll say const validation schema. This is going to be set to a yup.object. And we can just define our, uh, like our required fields or our error messages or things all inside of this object. So first, we'll start off with first name. So we'll say that first name should be a string. We'll say required. And inside of here, we'll have our required message. First name is required. We can do the same thing for last name. And then lastly, our email. And we can say that email is also a yup that string. We'll attach the email method. So this will check to see if it's a valid email address. And we'll say enter a valid email. And then we'll also say that this is required so it can't be left empty. And we'll say email is required. So this is our validation schema. I mentioned that it plays very nicely with Formic uh, because it just works like this. Formic accepts a validation schema. Validation schema. And we can just set it equal to our validation schema from above. So we're not gonna see anything yet in terms of UI. In order to do that, we wanna utilize material UIs uh, error um, property on our text field, as well as some helper text. So what we can do here is we can say, all right, if there's an error, we're gonna um, check to see first, has this field been touched? So has the first name field been touched? And so what this does is it avoids your form loading and then just showing errors without the user having done anything. So when somebody clicks in, that'll set the uh, touched property to true. And then afterward, if there are any errors, then the errors will show up. So if that's true, then we want to also check we can say Boolean, so we can um, turn the following into a Boolean. If, if there are errors dot first name. So has first name, has that field been touched? Has somebody gone into that field? And then are there any errors? And we can just set this to a true or false uh, value. And then the last thing we'll do is set some helper text so that the user can see what those errors are and then hopefully fix them. So we'll say formic.touched.firstname and formic 
dot errors dot first name. So the difference between this and this is that this one is setting this to a Boolean. So if there are uh, first name errors, then it's true. If not, then it's false. And this is actually showing the first name errors string, which if there are any errors, in this case required, so if it's not filled in, then this error message shows up. So that's what this is referring to. So now we can just copy these two and paste them, and then we'll just update the, um, the fields. So we can say first name will be last name instead, and same thing here, we'll do email. So now we hit save and everything should be wired up. So I'm gonna go ahead and refresh this. If I hit submit, first name is required, last name is required, email is required. So now, and notice that the error goes, goes away right as I enter my, uh, my name. You'll also notice that in the console, so if I, I fix that error, if I hit submit, it's not allowing me to do it because there are error messages here. So this is super nice. You can wire up, you know, like a disabled and you could set this to uh, be true, disabled is true if there are any errors or things like that. But it's nice that it kind of handles that for you and then shows those error messages. So I submit, emails required, enter a valid email. So this is not valid yet. And now it is, I hit submit. And there's all my information. So Material UI, Formic, and Yup. Powerful combination for handling UI out of the box so you don't have to worry about design as much. Handles all of your validation so it shows those errors. And it manages all of the state for you so you don't have to wire up multiple use state hooks or anything like that. You just set your fields and initial values. You have your on submit. You have your validation schema, and then as long as you have all of the um, correct properties here, which this is the uh, just about the minimum that you would need for each of those, unless you don't want to share your show your error or help, helper text, um, then you're all good to go. So, as always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, until next time, have a good one.